Hey kings, queens, and everything in between. Welcome back to another episode. One time for a good time. And today I kind of want to get something off my chest. Like, um, I've been having two internal struggles, battles uh, recently. And I've noticed that they kind of correlate with each other. So I'm just going to bring two topics into one for this episode. And um just shine light on it give perspective talk about it because I feel like and I've noticed a lot of people go through the same thing and I don't know if people are ashamed to talk about it or ashamed to put their voice out there or feel like they can't be heard or shouldn't be heard or it's nothing to talk about really but it is and to see how many people the situation affects and to see how many people relate to it but don't shine light on it it kind of bothers me so I'm coming on to this platform today to talk uh, about this situation let's get into it all right lovely people of the world let's just get right into it so recently and I'm gonna be honest like for a couple months now, um, I've been feeling lonely. Um, I've been going through this internal battle with like sexuality and friendships and communication and toxicity that it's hard for me because I'm so grounded, because I know what I want. And I know how many people out there in the world that are still struggling to find themselves. And and there's nothing wrong with that because I've been through that stage. But you see how many people that are still trying to find themselves. They're still experimenting and having these experiences with, with people, regardless if it's toxic or healthy. You know, trying to find some type of foundation to whatever they're building. And for me personally, I feel like when it comes to mentality and spirituality I have built a really good foundation for myself so it's hard for me to let people in it's hard for me to what they say get on a dating app and search for love and do the hookup thing and the talking stage thing because it's like I'm not trying to sound like I'm high maintenance or anything or 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 that I'm better than anybody but what it is is that I know what I want, you know, and the talking stage is cute. Like it really is cute. Like the dating stage that is cute, trying to explore through other people. That's really a, a cute thing. But I just get tired because it's just like, I, I know what I want. Like, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying you have to be with me, but what do you want? What is it that you want in your life? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to be married? Do you want kids? What do you want? You know, like going on dates and hanging out, that's that's fine. But when you're looking for something long term, and you're looking for something more concrete than just a fuck, really, it, it, it gets tiresome. It makes you isolated. For me personally, it makes me isolated. And um, the reason I'm bringing up this this subject is because I watched um, Nina Simone's documentary on Netflix which I highly recommend and if you don't know Nina Simone she is a classical trained pianist she's a I guess you would say jazz artist from the 1960s um she's known worldwide if you don't know any of her songs she's known for I'm feeling good uh center man Mississippi damn like all those like awesome fucking songs so if you have a chance to check it out because this is what really made me get the courage to speak about the subjects I'm speaking about today um but it talks about her life from the beginning to you know, how it ended and it showed how she went through all the training of becoming a classical pianist and how she wanted to be the first black female uh, pianist to play in um, 
and Carnegie Hall and how that didn't happen because she found, you know, another route for music and how she just got stuck in this circle of making music and not really having a social life. Like, you know, she had everybody looking at her, everybody, because she was this great pianist. And there was always eyes on her, but there was this clip where she said, no one ever wanted anything else from me beside to play the, play the piano. Like when I wanted to play and have fun and go out, no one ever wanted to do that with me. They just wanted to hear me play the piano. And as she got bigger into her career and grew, she realized that she was extremely lonely. And every time she walked on stage, she put on this facade of, I got to put on this show. But you would see clips of her where you could tell that she was there, but she wasn't there. Like she wanted more. And everybody around her at the time explained how she always desired something more than music, than playing the piano, than singing. She wanted love. She wanted a family. She wanted happiness. Um, and they talked about how her husband beat her for many years and then how her daughter was born. All she wanted to do was be with her daughter and spend time with her and treasure her because it was like she was reborn again. She was, she actually looked alive. She actually felt alive with her daughter. Um, and she Nina Simone has said plenty of times of how lonely she is, um, how she's become suicidal and, and depressed and how she's willing to end everything because she doesn't see light. And for me personally, I had to sit back and literally think about this because I've definitely been in her shoes where you just feel so isolated. It's like you almost feel like an outcast. You feel like you can't connect with people. Um, you feel like no one underst no one understands your words. Um, and there's this like deep fear of, will I find love? Will I be happy? Because like me personally, when it comes to mental health and my spiritual and everything else, I'm very good. Like I'm very... A 10. But at the end of the day, we're all humans. You know, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. We desire some type of love and affection. And imagine if you're getting all this love from like different places. And you're content with that love. But then you realize you want something more. You know, friendship, love. It's fucking amazing. It's awesome to go hang out with your friends. It's awesome that you can love your mother or love your father or love a pet or love a sibling. Those are beautiful fucking loves. But when you realize when you get home and it's dark and you have nobody there. Or you have nobody to build with. I see all the time. There's people that say, I wish I had somebody here with me to experience this moment. Or I did something fucking amazing and I couldn't enjoy it because I didn't have anybody there with me. And people always say, enjoy being alone. And I have. Don't get it twisted. Being alone is fucking beautiful. It really is. When you can... Have fun and enjoy yourself and be entertained by yourself. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. But what it is, is when you have too many of those days where you have nobody. And you're like, it's been weeks, it's been months, it's been years. And it's just me. And I started watching the show Generation on HBO Max. Highly 
fucking recommend. I was going to do a TV show review on it, but I'll just talk about it in here because it, it, it correlates with what I'm saying. If you have watched the show, you know Chester. Chester is, I guess you say the main character. Um, I don't know. He's kind of a side character, but main character because he was the first character shown on the TV show. But he's an openly gay man. If you see Chester, he's very <laughs> rainbows, very much flamboyant, uh, metrosexual. He's, you know, farts rainbows out his ass. Like, he's just Chester. He's awesome. He's everything that I wish I could have been, you know? But I realized watching his character he is everything I am you know if you watch him he's very energetic he's very outgoing outspoken like fist to the world you know fuck the world type person but when he's alone he's lonely and there's a scene where he's on the rooftop and he sends a picture of himself and it says this is what lonely feels like and I completely understood that scene in totality because loneliness isn't fun because you're alone you feel like you're the only person alone you feel so isolated and then you look at statistics where it's like 7.3 billion people in the world. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> 7.3 billion people in the world. And I'm like, I'm just here by myself. And it sounds depressing because it is. And then you go on forums and, and websites and go on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And you see how lonely people are and how attention seeking people are and how much people just want to be seen and desired and for a second you hate them you think why is it that you are such an attention seeking whore why is it that you want likes and you want this and you want that and you want to do crazy shit to be seen but then you realize after a while all anybody wants is to be loved All anybody wants is just to spend their time on this planet with someone, regardless if it's a loved one or just a friend. Um, You see people of higher stature, regardless if it's a celebrity or a politician or whatever, And every once in a while, they'll come out and say, hey, I'm actually very fucking lonely. And I actually feel like I don't have anybody. And then you have hundreds and millions of people coming at their throat saying, but you have money and you have this and you have houses and you have cars and you have X, Y, and Z. How the fuck are you lonely? You look at um, Billie Eilish. She has over 60 million followers, I think. And even with all of those eyes on her, Kim Kardashian, yeah, the list goes on. With all those eyes on them, they still feel alone. They still feel insecure. They still feel like they can't have this connection and build this connection with somebody. And that's why I appreciate the show Generation with uh, Chester, because being a gay person, and I'm not trying to trigger anybody when I say this, please listen to this with an open mind, (laughs) because it's going to sound cliche and it's going to sound so fucking like tone deaf (laughs) when I say this but being gay is hard and let me explain imagine 
if you're so content with yourself, like you know what you want, you know what you desire, you know what you love. And regardless if it's your environment or the people around you, it's hard to find somebody, if that makes sense. You know, and I was talking about this to a couple of my friends, actually, for the past couple of weeks. It's like. I've been with men. I love me a man. I love me a good human being. But when it comes to a woman, it's like I haven't had that experience. You know. And it's almost as like, I'm scared to have it because I don't know if I can't have it. And it's like, I don't want to fuck it up because all I ever been with was with men and et cetera, et cetera. And and, And your mind starts to race and you start to feel lonely again because it's like, I am this. I'm gay, I'm bi, I'm whatever. But I can't, I feel like I can't be my true self because of regardless of society or whatever. And I know people are going to say, girl, it's 2021. Go live your best life. Go do whatever the fuck you want. Blah, blah, blah. Go ahead, says, get, do whatever. And then there was a video maybe four or five days ago that came out. It went viral. I'm talking about all over TikTok, all over Instagram. It was this little black boy, cute little black boy. He must have been eight years old. And in the side of his head, the word fag was shaved in his head. And the mother and I think his brother or uncle maybe were standing around him and saying, you can't be that you need to stop doing that gay shit you need to stop doing x y z you are straight right you like women this is how you were this is how you're going to be and this is how you were raised saying all this derogatory and homophobic shit to this eight-year-old boy and you could see him trying to say this is me this is how i am This is what I like. And he was just completely getting shut down by the mother and uh, and uncle or maybe brother. I don't know who he was. And I looked at this video and I said, this is exactly why. I and so many people in the LGBT community are afraid to love who the fuck they love. Because there's people, there's still people, regardless of the year, regardless of the era, There's still people out there that are willing to just degrade you until you're nothing. So you can be seen as them. And that's what really fucking bothers me is because nothing would make me happier is having a queen by my side and loving her unconditionally and showing her the absolute most best of this world and being content and happy with this person. Nothing would be more fun for me. But when I look at dating apps and I look at society and I look at Instagram and I look at all these places, I think I can't do that. Because even when you go on a dating app, you still hear stories of people posing as men or female just so you can meet them and they kill you. There have been hundreds and hundreds of stories of people being killed from being clickbaited or for pretending to be trans or being gay so that hater can hurt that person. It, it's scary. And so you stay in the quote-unquote closet because you don't know where to look you don't know where to go for love you know and everybody to know this is nothing new 
also when it comes to you know lgbt community there's a stigma that it's toxic as there's a stigma that it's just a std fest that is just this big like fuck community it could be true who doesn't like a good nut who doesn't like a good intercourse session but when you see how the world is portraying a community and you see how people have been treated every single year for the past hundred years when it comes to uh same-sex marriage same-sex relationships interracial relationships any type of relationship you see it's sad and it becomes lonely and I was on this um thread it was like a safe space for gay people and and another person said the exact same thing I said they said being gay is lonely is fucking lonely and it's this internal battle i just been going through with just loneliness and trying to find someone to love someone to just spend my life with you know because money's nice you know having things is nice that's cute but what is imagine having a whole fucking house land property you can take trips and you're just the only one there by yourself it's lonely and when you look at forums like places that are designated for this stuff and you see that the number of people that are active is like hundreds of thousands and you see how many people are commenting and posting every single day it's like holy shit i'm not alone but you feel like you are because with loneliness you feel like it's only you out there you feel like it's only you going through this phase this depression this sadness and it's not it's millions of people out there wanting some type of attention, wanting some type of affection and love, regardless if they want to admit it or not. I see it, honey. I see it all over social media. People just wanting to be seen. People just wanting to be heard. People wanting to feel validated. That's why I speak so much about self-love is because, you know, Happiness really does come from within yourself. It truly does. Um, There's only so much validation you can get from somebody else until you realize, I'm not happy anymore. This, This drug called dopamine isn't fulfilling me. And a lot of people go to other things for their serotonin. And I just want to make it clear, like, I know not everybody believes in a self-love journey and not everyone believes in therapy or helping themselves or talking to people or communicating or writing down their feelings. Hell, I was that person for a long fucking time. But when you actually realize how much your mind controls you and you realize how much you as a human being are just yourself and just your mind and your thoughts, you have to realize that's something you need to keep healthy. You need to keep the thing that wakes you up, that tells you to move, that tells you to eat, that tells you to sleep, shit, whatever, healthy. And a lot of us just look for that serotonin look for that medication through others and imagine if you're a person that is searching for validation you are a person that have no self-worth low self-esteem you're self-deprecating 
you self doubt all the time, all the time. And you go to somebody else that maybe is the exact same way as you, but they give off the perception that they are better than what you think they are. Now you have two people that know nothing about true happiness, that know nothing about health, mental health, trying to build each other up when you're really destroying each other. Regardless if it's trying to get that love that you think you were originally there for. And I want to talk about it. I really wanted to get on here and talk about it because it's really sad when you open your eyes to a world and see how many people, how many human beings actually just walk around here with the same thoughts and the same ideology. How sad it is to think how many people wake up and degrade themselves, regardless if it's in the mirror or self-harm or bullying or get online to hurt other people so they can feel better about themselves it's sad it's all over the place but it's so normalized because a lot of people don't know anything but that toxic love but that self-deprecation and, and low self-esteem but when you actually find yourself and you love yourself and you take accountability for the trauma that you have occurred over the years and you take the initiative to fix that you'll be the strongest person you know and I think that's that's what happened to me I learned the difference between toxic love and healthy love and I learned the difference between low self-esteem and high self-esteem and loving myself and hating myself and et cetera, et cetera. and now it's just I feel alone because I know I am on a planet full of people that don't love themselves. But I'm also the person that is that is afraid to love because of sexuality, because of society. So it's this cycle of being afraid. This huge fucking cycle of being afraid and not knowing where to go and who to go to and who to talk to and who to kiss and who to ask out and where to find happiness. <laughs> I don't know. I think yesterday when I went to the pool, I went by myself on purpose. Um, everything I always do, I always do with a friend. I always go out with people. And I love doing that, but for once in my life, I kind of just wanted to do something by myself just to see if I could do it. Um, just to see if it would find me any interest. And um, I went to the pool. And I got in and I, and I could swim and I kept swimming and I stayed there for like an hour and 30 minutes. And I remember everybody left. It was just only me. And I was sitting there thinking how at peace I was, how quiet everything was, how relaxed I felt. And I said to myself, and I looked towards the sky, and regardless if you're religious or not, you know, that has nothing to do with me. Um, I said, God... I realize everything I've been asking you, everything that I ever wanted from you wasn't for me. And I realize the reason I never got the things I've asked or wanted over these years is because it wasn't for me. And that now as I sit in this pool and I sit with a clear mind, I ask for peace. I ask for you to protect my family, to provide us with health and wealth and love. And I know that 
as for now on when I get out this pool and I move on with my life I will only look for the positive things and I would no longer take things for granted and with everything that comes to me I would know it's a blessing and so I asked I said even though I am at a safe space in my life, a loving place in my life. If you will allow it, if you would want it, provide me with a companion to walk through this world with as I live on my days, as I continue my path in life. Provide me with this tranquil feeling that I am feeling right now. And I will ask for no more. Amen. I said that. And when I said. A piece of calmness came over me. Serenity came over me. I've never felt something like that in my life. Not even in my entire self-love journey. And I quietly got out the pool and I dried myself off and I went home. And I think about this moment today. Because I truly mean it. Regardless of whatever is given to me. And everything I've been asking for in the past few years. I know that now what I get is a blessing and who I love is a gift. And I know not a lot of you will understand those words and not a lot of you are probably in a place in your life where you can completely comprehend. Or, or or want to believe in what I said, and that's okay. <laughs> that's completely okay. That's one thing I've learned about living on this planet is that everyone is literally on different paths. You might find some that's on the same path, the same chapter, the same page, the same sentence, and that's great. And you might find someone that's reading a completely different book. And no one is wrong in the path they're taking. So if you understand the message that I just gave to you today in this episode, that's great. That's lovely. And I hope you can take something from this and do whatever you want with it. But if you didn't and this message didn't resonate with you, that's completely fine too. That doesn't make you any less of a human. It doesn't make you any different of a person because you didn't understand what I said. I just want you guys to all know that I appreciate you. And if you are a person that is going through loneliness and that is struggling with your sexuality or just struggling with anything, regardless if it's money or relationships or happiness or finding a job, whatever, you are blessed. You are a beautiful human being and you are worth it. No matter what journey you're going down, or no matter what road you are taking, you are worth it. And I feel like there's not a lot of people saying that out there. And I want you to know that you deserve whatever you put your heart to, whatever you put your passion into. If you got a dream, go for it. If you got something that you want to do or put out there, do it. We really only have one life. That's it. No more, no less. What are you going to do with yours? And I'll leave it at that. I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful day. Please stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay prayed up. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.